Yes, people, Killer Keller here. This is Street Culture Podcast, live from the Arts Arcade Piccadilly Circus for Television. This is where we find, source and encourage new and burgeoning artists into the space that started their humble lives in the beginning of street culture and raised their profile into commercial success. And today our guest will not disappoint. Pop artist from around the world, collaborating with the likes of the Rolling Stones and more. This is Sarah, pop artist. How are you? I'm really good. Thank it's a pleasure you. to have you at Arts oh, Arcade. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> where have you travelled from? Brighton. Today. Brighton. Yeah. That is one hell of a home of uh, of arts and creativity, isn't it? Oh my God. Yeah, it's like teeming with artists, musicians, everything, really. Yeah. I really, yeah, it's really nice to live there because not only do you have all that, but, you know, obviously you have the sea as well. So it's quite, it's like loads and loads of energy and loads going on but you also have the calmness mm. of the sea as well for sure and so many exhibition houses popping up yeah there? actually loads of new galleries yeah. all the time and yeah it's quite exciting mm. loads of like street art and yeah i mean it, we've just had like during the month of may it's the whole month is like a big festival where there's loads of you know you have the great escape festival of course, um yeah. Loads of like art things happening, um, loads of performances. It's just yeah, there's so much in, happening in Brighton. Just inspiration everywhere yeah, you turn. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, I do sense uh, an accent in you though. You, you, yes. <laughs> not originally from. Oh no, it's still there. <laughs> it's creeping through. You spotted it. <laughs> You're too north or south. Where are you from? Um, I'm from sort of Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire area, Midlands. Oh, wow, really, <laughs> really. Yeah, that's that's where I, in, I inherited my vowel sounds. Mm, from. Sometimes, like when you come from a place, I mean, I'm not one to prejudge, but the idea of coming from those places where, compared to Brighton or mm, London, yeah. the, the art the art scene, yeah, um, it's it's almost like an arm's length away from where the action is. Really yeah. taking place, but that can be quite an inspirational uh, um, area to, to 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 kind of forge ideas incubated within your own. Yeah, mate, that's that's interesting actually because I don't know. Like when I when I was a kid growing up, like I was really creative. I always had the desire to like I was either drawing or making things. I was like cutting up clothes and making my own clothes, um, but like because I didn't have any kind of outside. Um, inspiration and also uh, you know my school was really terrible there was there was nothing inspiring in the, going on in the art class at all so I, I never got the understanding of like what art could be and I you know fr from being a kid I kind of thought that art was just really dry and boring mm. from my experience but mm -hmm. maybe because of that I cultivated this inner thing yeah. I don't know but yeah, it it meant that I didn't immediately sort of you know pursue art as as a thing. Um, in really, my young, so it wasn't yeah. it wasn't you wouldn't go you wouldn't readily go to an art no um, an art no. class. Well, I, I mean, I, I studied art sort of for GCSE, but it was it was literally kind of you know uh, do a, a pencil drawing of this bicycle wheel. It was kind of like <laughs> that that level of you yeah. Know, yeah yeah yeah. I, I know exactly. What you mean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was art to you at that time then? What were, you know, who were your influences? What were the what were the things you were picking up on? Um, I think at that time I was kind of be, because I didn't I didn't have any influences of artists or art or galleries. I kind of I looked more to popular culture, mm. to fashion and you know music, mm. and that's kind of what I, I would say were more my influences than actual artists because ah. I, I I didn't feel that was really you know, coming into my world at that point. So what was the music of its time? What were what were what were the influences there? I guess, you know, kind of it was like the Manchester time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, happy we love it. We love it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Stone roses. All the usual <laughs> candidates. Awesome. Yeah. And being from the north, they were prevalent for, for a time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you know, yeah, Manchester was really mm. there's a lot happening mm. at that time. A lot of the uh a lot of that scene of its time. I don't think they even realised what cues they were taking, you know. Um, Joy Division mm. and such, uh, of, a, of an earlier ilk. Fashion, I mean, such as Judy Blame um, and these, these more... Uh, 
these more 80s alternative mm. uh, artists. They were really part of that yeah. scene, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which, absolutely. Is incre- which, which is crazy when you think about it and how that migrates over the years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everything kind of influencing everything. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, artists themselves, any, anybody that really stuck out from an uh, exhibited standpoint, somebody that you'd you know, you'd see in a magazine's ID or whatever, anything like um, that was around at the time that was influencing you? Um, I don't... Do you know, I, I really wasn't looking to art. It was really, really strange. It was really kind of fashion and popular culture and, and music That's that amazing. I was kind of influenced by. That's amazing, because yeah. when you see... Uh, and if you haven't checked Sarah's out, art out, you, you really should. This is <clears throat> this is the whole point. I think with, with a lot of what you do, it does extend... Uh, an interest into street art uh, in a in a way mostly because most because of the, the, the enforced color that you have at, mm. and you, you put across you know the gorgeous lips and all the different models you know got rolling stones-esque kind of yeah. look to them but but you really do work with different mediums and try different things out mm. um and, and yeah you love you love the lip design there's something about that right yeah yeah it's it, it, it's fun. It's curious. Um, like when I did, because I'm self-taught. When I first started painting, I kind of I was very unconscious about it. I mm. just did things that my intuition told me to do. And I didn't have any idea why. Mm. And when I started painting, I was kind of immediately just drawn to the face, and very and quite quickly I isolated just the mouth. And I started exploring that as a subject. I was really kind of drawn to it and mm. compelled by it. And I, I didn't know why at the time, but I just felt the need to do it. And then sort of over time, I think, you know, your subco- your unconscious becomes a bit more conscious and you realise why you do things. And, you know, the mouth is kind of fundamental to our human experience. Mm. We communicate using our mouth. It's like, you know, one of the major focuses of communication. But not only that, like... Um, you know, connection through kissing, it, you mm. know, it's a physical thing. And also, you know, breathing, eating, mm. it's such a, a sort of, it's so fundamental to the human experience. Yeah. And, you know, m- I think that's why, you know, it, to me, it's been such a fascinating subject to explore for, you know, and evolve over time. Yeah. I think the most intriguing thing about your pieces is, you know, that the mouth, you know, has been documented as, uh, as that uh, symbolic mm. uh, ang- at the angle that you talk of, but the way that you're able to adapt it and make it your own, I mean that's a that's a journey in itself. How do you how do you make how do you create it so it's so prominent compared to other 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 art pieces that have gone before? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because like for me, each artwork is a is a portrait. It's a I I. I like to think that I create lip portraits so for me it's kind of like I'm drawing from the person that I'm painting mm-hmm. and therefore of course it's completely unique because mm-hmm. every person is is unique yeah um, and my ex, you know expression of them and you know hopefully capturing their expression is unique but I think also I mean I do draw from popular culture like mm-hmm. I, before I became an artist I worked in fashion uh-huh. for many years as a shoe designer and prior to that I worked in magazines as a designer and art director so I have all this influence of oh, like wow. imagery and you know self-expression through um you know color and shape and form yeah. and all of that I think sort of feeds into it as well and I definitely think that feeds into the aesthetic of what I do because you know I, I've had all this influence of you know like with fashion for example of what what people do to create attraction to to draw attention mm. to you know and so I've really kind of absorbed all of that yeah. and you know, I like to think of that all my paintings are beautiful and mm. attractive mm. and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, feminine. Mm. Like a real feminine feel to them, a real natural feel. Those little nuances that you talk of. Yeah. When you're getting the, the idea and concept and actually painting from source. I, yeah. I had no idea that that was the case. So you yeah. have people that readily come in and 
Yeah, yeah. So basically the process is that I always start with a photo shoot. So I'll invite my subject to the studio for a photo shoot. I, um, I sort of paint their mouth in a particular way because it sort of increases my understanding of the three-dimensionality of the mouth. And I'll also use specific lighting for that reason. And then it will basically be just me and the person in the studio, us having an exchange, but me behind the camera. Wow. And just taking, like, thousands okay. of shots okay so on that <laughs> note so what do you talk about that uh, you know uh, is it alluring enough for the for the lips to do what you wanted to do what, what kind of conversations do you have in the studio do you know what like i find everybody fascinating so there's never any you know it, there's always something to talk about and something to understand and you know because everybody i i kind of think that everybody is a whole universe yeah. in themselves and so i'm i'm always fascinated by people wow but how do you capture a moment with one isolated area of the human face? Because obviously, if you start, start talking about something a little bit spicy, for instance, and you know, the, that face exactly. So how do you capture all of that essence within one singular piece of the face? How do you, how do you capture that? Um, well, I mean, okay, so the process that I have is to take like thousands of shots while, while somebody's just expressing themselves naturally, whether that's laughing or, or whatever, um, during uh, that time. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll sort of study the whole group of photos and I'll get like a strong direction from several, you know, like a, a big group of those images to which I then use as a sort of foundation to try and capture some kind of expression from that wow. person. That's bonkers. Uh, do you... Do you superimpose, like if there was, if there's a particular angle on one side of the lip and you're like, well, actually, I like that side there. Do you, yeah. do you work within those um, in, in, in that direction as well? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, um, it's like the painting isn't a direct copy of any photo. So it's kind of like just giving a flavour to start the painting, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, of course. So has anyone ever come back to you after and said, well, I didn't realise my face was doing that at that point. <laughs> like, my lips, you know, my lips weren't having those drips hanging off. Like, they must be you know, surprised. It's, it's funny because um, when I do a, a lip portrait of somebody who's commissioned me to do, to do it, when they, when they first see their painting, because sometimes they can be, you know, quite sort of large in scale as well, yeah. it's quite, it can be quite overwhelming. Because it's a person. big. <laughs> it's like, it's a big. Because it's like a part of your body that maybe you don't focus on no. too much or, you know, to see it at that scale. So sometimes it takes, you know, I've had people like sort of almost in tears, or, you know, a lot really? of emotion. Yeah. Wow, because it's so personal. So personal. It's like, yeah. So different mediums, different uh, textures, and, and there's a process, clearly, that you, you go from A to, to C. Yeah. Uh, and like you say, I think the fashion aspect comes into it mm. and knowing that process, yeah. having experienced it in, in business and, and creating for a wider market. How important is that for, for artists in general, do you think, to have some sort of input, understanding of that process? Um, I think it can only be helpful, mm. you know, because um, do you mean do you mean kind of like the business aspect or what, um, the, or process. the process? Yeah. Um, I think I think it's it's helpful to have experience of the process because it kind of gives you sort of a certain kind of discipline mm. to kind of not just give up on something. You know, you you sort of hone a sort of process that sort of works for you mm. and. Um, yeah, I think um, having that experience, wor like working, is is just helpful. Yeah. Really. Is it a long process? Is it a, is it a drawn out, you know, week or two period where you've got a, or is it kind of patterned up so you you've got a clear idea that oh this will take a X Y Z amount of time. Um, <clears throat> what the painting from start to finish? Yeah. It's usually between like two and three months. Wow. Um, so once I've once I've got the direction that I want to go in for the painting. Um, I begin the painting and that's a case of um, I use oil paints and I add like a lot of oil to it so it's really kind of thin and glossy yeah. and drippy and then I'll sort of work in layers so I'll paint a layer that has to dry a certain amount like mm -hmm. a certain amount of days and then I'll go over the top and sort of build it up which is why I sort of managed to get this kind of 
almost airbrushed look. Like some people, yeah. if, they, if they haven't seen my work in real life, they don't even know it's an oil painting. They don't even know if it's a painting <laughs> because insane. it could be to their eyes. You know, if you've only seen it on a digital screen, it could be a digital image because yeah. it's so airbrushed and perfect. And layered. Yeah, layered yeah. And, layered. and then like build up the colour and like the saturation of colour. And you're right, they don't teach that that level of attention at school or if they do they, they always want you to validate it they, they want to know why you did that that's it and I you know what it's, it's kind of funny because I didn't go to art school I actually um, I studied a degree in maths ah. that's what in my in maths ah. that's why the um, time kicking was so prompt <laughs> <laughs> getting you. <laughs> I'll help it. Yeah, I'll no, be late. I love it. I love it. No, um, we love it. <laughs> um, so, like, I think, you know, if you do have art school experience, you are kind of asked to justify everything. Mm. I wonder whether that would have been a good or bad... I'll, uh, I'll never know. Yeah. But, um, yeah. There's a maverick experience being an artist, especially in 2024, or whenever you're watching it, you know. it's You've got to go with where your gut takes you. It's quite hard to educate that, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it's hard to educate someone to trust that intuit. You know, like yeah. like I mentioned, when I first started painting, I had no idea why I was doing what I was doing. Yeah. But obviously, it was in my subconscious, and there was there was a reason for it. But yeah, yeah. I I trusted enough to just, I do you know, I I felt compelled to start painting. I just had to do it. I didn't know why. I just like a calling of sorts. Yeah, yeah. It was a fight or flight attitude to artists that you know obviously are working within popular culture the urgency to get things done it, sometimes that overrides the whole creative process it's it's um it's by design there's this two halves in your head isn't it of yeah. like work efficiency yeah. delivery yes. market yeah and then there is the creative oh and there's the creative side <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can it can be um difficult sometimes to carve out time to have a play yeah. and it's really important to yeah. have a play <laughs> yeah there you go you heard it for have a play because it, it is it really is the last thing you think about because the last thing you want to be doing is playing when you know your back's up against the wall totally yeah yeah, yeah, yeah how yeah, do you I overcome that um you just, well firstly being aware of it and being conscious of it because then at least it's you know you know that it's something that you actively need to kind of carve out time for and then you just do it yeah. to make yourself do it i think it's the biggest uh it's the elephant in the room for a lot of artists that yeah. you know are, are stuck in that not stuck in a creative rut but it's that it's that extra 20 percent that, that really yeah. sees you through doesn't it and it also it it's sort of it keeps you motivated because otherwise you you could kind of forget why you're doing this. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That you, the reason you do it is is so that you can play and so that you can explore and be curious and do your own thing. Do your own thing, like answer to no one, yeah. like just you know. God, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah, uh, I think that's where. I mean, street artists. We were talking about this before because obviously it's predominantly a, a street yeah. uh, art uh, show. Um, the, the turnaround of creativity in that world, do you think that influences a lot of popular culture nowadays in the terms of, you know, how you get your art out and how quickly you have to do it before it's forgotten? Yeah, I mean, I think there's an expectation now that it, that it should be really quick. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like galleries, like I've told galleries how long it takes me to make my artworks and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, that seems to them a long time. Yeah. But, you know, it's really... It, it's really not a long time, like a couple of two or three months for a piece is, you know, but like, you know, some artists, they can get, do a piece a week. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think there's there is more and more expectation to have this kind of volume of like being able to, you know, get loads of pieces out quickly. And you don't you don't like playing to that, that, that dance. It doesn't work with my process mm. because because oil paint has its own you know, unique mm. qualities. Mm. I can't speed it up, yeah. you know, so I just have to be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oil paint. I mean, that in itself nowadays is a... Uh, I mean, it's it, it's steeped in history. I love that. And I love, that's. I think that's partly why I love... Because um, I work with neon as well. Yeah, so you I, do. I, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> I mix, um, you know, mixing the historic oil painting with something... You know, with neon which is associated with like yeah like street and sex industry and you yeah. know so contemporary 
Oh, um, you're absolutely right. And like, like, it's lovely to have that, you know, uh, dichotomy. Is that the dichotomy, word? Dichotomy. Dichotomy. Yeah, like, yeah we'll take it. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so that that is a that, I guess that's an inner dialogue for yourself when creating something is that that mix of almost like uh, decades of tradition and then flipping it on its head and doing yeah. stuff like neon, like you say, yeah. with such a sensual um, aspect to the human body, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So with um with the shoe industry and yeah. and and that whole era of of your uh, career feet and lips really don't go together but how well they do for some people <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there it's a different podcast uh you'll find that on the channel uh <laughs> behind the scenes um do the fashion industry is so rigid in, in all the best ways mm. but to to work within that field and then come into a a space like you say where you need time you need to i mean you take a lot of cues from having that experience right yeah oh absolutely yeah but does does did, did any did at any point did it hamper your creative thinking to begin with that you know just by the way that you'd been kind of working within the the, the frames of, of fashion um no actually um really? i think because I think one of the reasons why I started painting was to, was to kind of escape into my own world, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm. So, uh, you know, when I started painting, I didn't. Uh, there was nobody that I had to answer to or deliver to, or, mm. because it was literally me in my kitchen just painting and like exploring this thing. I, at that point, I had no idea what it was going to turn into. Was I had that, no was it scary? expectations. Was it ner nerve wracking? No, because it was, it wasn't, it was for me. It mm. wasn't for, you know, it, I wasn't like, oh my God, I want to like have work in the Saatchi gallery. I want to, you know, mm -hmm. it was just, I needed to do this expression. Mm. Um, I'd say the first thing that was really nerve wracking was when I, um, I met um, an artist who lived by me and, and he had uh, use of a, an empty shop and he was like let's put on an exhibition together because at that point I had you know several artworks at that point only my friends and family had seen them which obviously they're always like oh it's amazing yeah, yeah that's right that's right <laughs> they're, they're the kind um, of people that get you to the audition of Britain's Got Talent and then, then they yeah. tell you you're not very good right <laughs> <laughs> no one's prepared it's, to tell you anything exactly yeah. so yes the general public so yeah. um, that was um, that was quite nerve wracking sort of being public about it yeah that was very nerve-wracking actually yeah it's like bearing a little bit of your soul yeah but your your art is so commercially viable and it, there must have been an inner confidence you thinking to yourself yeah i think i've got this i don't know i was very nervous really yeah i don't know because it's just it's so personal mm. So yeah. what happened when it when when it when all said and done dust has settled and you've done the exhibition what was the general feedback Oh, well, it was, it was amazing. I d it was partly um, some portraits I'd done, and then I think I had, like, four lip pieces, and all the lip pieces sold on the first night. Wow. Um, which kind of... Which I found really interesting, because it was like, oh, these are really, like, connecting with people. Mm. And, as, and because that's, you know, now I know, like, part, you know, why I paint them is to communicate something and to connect. Mm. Like, that's why I do it. It's mm. like a form of me being able to connect with the world. Mm. Um, and it was landing. So that kind of encouraged me to want to, you know, explore it mm. more. So what was your taking cues from the first one? And obviously, you know, history wrote and you ended up doing a lot more. Yeah. Because... Um, on just on your Instagram alone, it's you know you're, you're prolific, um, and you can see the development. Um, but how how much of your art would you say is driven by social events or, or political events or things that has there ever been one where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna, I've got to do this now. This one, I've got to do. Um, not really. I think I'm I'm more um, I absorb popular culture. Yeah. And I think that's my biggest, probably, influence rather than political. Yeah. It's always best to stay away from that, isn't it, in many respects? I don't know. I mean, some artists go there, but yeah. it's not what speaks to me. So, mm. yeah. What's the, uh, <clears throat> uh, what's the biggest exhibition you've, you've held up to this point? What's the, what's the, what's the event where you're, you, know, you, you could hand your hat on and say, oh, I'm proud of that one. That was, that was, I didn't expect that one coming through the door. Yeah, it, 
Oh, I don't know, because it's like, it's sort of this gradual evolving thing. I, I do remember when, you know, when I, um, um, I did a, an exhibition as a group show with Jealous Gallery in the Saatchi Gallery, and that, that was a bit of a moment, because I think um, it's kind of easy to just be like, onto the next thing, onto the next mm. thing all the time, and never ever take time to sort of stand back and think, oh no, like you've done really good here. You yeah. know, and smell the roses a bit. Exactly, and... it's re- it's really easy not to do that. And like when I was w- sort of walking to the private view at the Saatchi Gallery, because I love the building and the whole it's, like it's amazing, yeah, yeah, and I really love the gallery. And it was just like, oh my god, like it was a moment. Who'd have thunk like, it? Who'd have thunk it? And <laughs> yeah, and then you know, having like solo show in Paris, which I love, and um, yeah, just lots of things really. But yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah, it's it's good to kind of just have a little mm. deep breath and like think, oh yeah, this is done good. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> damn right, you have. And you're and you're on the podcast, even better. <laughs> your podcast. Ooh, yeah. What's uh, what's your uh, what's your family think? Because it's a different. I'm sure it's a different kind of. Uh, oh yeah, it's sort of blown their minds. Like my, my family was a very like mathsy family um so my dad um worked in computers all his life and studied maths my sister also studied maths and um they you know my parents uh, were like we, we didn't see this we didn't see this it's like how could you not but anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but you know they're really proud they're really proud um uh, my, I think my parents' house is like it's basically an homage to my artwork. It's like you go <laughs> down. A photo it's, like, of you, it's, it's a gallery. <laughs> <laughs> it's gallery. I'm sure they have friends around the loan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's totally, totally, totally. Are you a fan of someone here? Yeah, I, no, I get it. Uh, no, no one champions you more than your family, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, which is a beautiful thing. Mm. Uh, do you go back up there much? Um, well, they don't live there. Like, all my family are in different countries now. My yeah. parents live in Spain, and my sister and her family live in France. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah. All dotted yeah. around. Yeah. Um, and I guess they get they get whispers of what's been going on here quite fr- quite frequently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all quite close. We're all back and forth and in touch. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, who have you collaborated with? Have you collaborated with anyone that uh, you'd care to mention? Anybody that you even? Oh, I've done a piece for him, and uh, yeah, he loved it. Did anyone that? Ah, well, I've done, I've done a few like nice sort of commissions. I, I had the Princess of Liechtenstein in my studio. Liechtenstein. <laughs> who knew that that was the country? Wow. <laughs> um, so that was quite fun having a princess. Um, it was fun. Uh, last year I did. Um, I did an exhibition with the English National Opera, and. Um, I got to paint Benson Wilson, one of the baritone opera singers. So that was awesome, actually. Wow. He came to my studio and I had him singing arias while I photographed him. <laughs> that's incredible. It was so cool. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, that's, that's rare in anyone's career yeah. to, to have those opportunities. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's really one of the big reasons why I do it is to like meet the, you know, so many interesting different people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But um, also, I did like a while ago. I did a thing. It was a charity thing, and it was I got I got paired with Ronnie Wood. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so it was now really- there is <laughs> there is it going full circle, full I know, right? circle. <laughs> wow! What did he What did he have to say about? Uh, well, about I, your oh, work? I never met him. Unfortunately, it was this. It was for the charity called Changing Faces. I don't know if you've heard of it, but the idea Gary Mansfield sort of curated the exhibition. It was. Uh, his, he set it up, I think, and basically artists would be paired up. One artist would create an artwork and then the other art- artist would be given the artwork and paint, like, embellish or, you know, scratch out or do whatever to that artwork. So I got paired with Ronnie. Are you telling me that and Ronnie was... Wood and you collaborated on a, on, on a piece? Yeah, so I I did it. What? <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's so cool because obviously the lips were really... I know. <laughs> <laughs> you must have just been in your element. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. You can, you can retire now. That... <laughs> do you know what though? I thought I'd lo- I'd love to do a commission of mixed lips. That okay. I think that's my you yeah. know all time. You not reached out yet? Goal. No, but maybe I should. I've got this idea for an exhibition. Yeah. So you should totally do that. I mean, yeah. Again, it it's just a signal to uh, 
to popular culture that totally you get yeah. a full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you do a lot of exhibitions. You got you got a few on the in the works at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah, lots. Um, I was in a thing in Bonham's auction house. Yeah, so I've heard it's around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just up there. Um, yeah, at the beginning of the year, I had a solo show over in Fitzrovia Brilliant. with um, Grove Gallery, exploring the colour red. Um, and then, yeah, I've, um, I'm going to be doing some work with this gallery, Agony and Ecstasy, in Ibiza. 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 Ibiza, love. <laughs> uh, um, when's, that, when's that due? When's that happening? Um, so I've, I just sent a piece over there, which I think is going into an exhibition this week. Um, and then we've talked about later in the year doing some kind of solo show. But how do you, do, how do you, how do you work with an exhibition house in another country? How does that work? So, um, generally, a gallery will get in touch mm. and say that, you know, they like your work and they're interested in working with you. And then um, it depends on the gallery. Like some galleries that, you know, if they're focus focusing on prints and originals, they might, you know, buy some prints off you and then, mm. you know, sort of exhibit them or get an artwork over and put it in a group show or have a solo show. Mm. So, yeah, you just kind of, I guess you, if when you align mm. with your... Um, you know, with your artwork and what they're doing, then, yeah, yeah it can be a good collaboration. And Ibiza's a place to be for, for art exhibitions and such? Well, it's really curious, actually, because I spoke with Emma at the gallery and she was saying that, um, like, up until now, like, th there isn't a whole lot of contemporary art in Ibiza, which is astounding to me. Like, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. But apparently it's starting, it's just on the beginning of this big boom of, like, contemporary art i can so, see it happening it makes yeah. sense when you think about art basel and and things like that where which well, is yeah just the culture of yeah. ibiza which is so you know creative and it makes uh, a whole heap of sense yeah. and why i hadn't been i know investigated it's kind of before. odd isn't it yeah it is odd you know this sort of trad fishing boats like <laughs> art <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah totally totally <laughs> wow um so that's when is that again sorry so that, I think that's opening this week. Wow. <laughs> well, we'll be late for that one on this one. <laughs> we'll be late for that. But where can we see your stuff in, uh, in the UK? Um, so um, I've, got, I've, I've always got lots of prints at Jealous Gallery. Do you know Jealous Gallery? Yeah, of course, Gallery? yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you can always go there and ask to see some work. Wow. Um, I'm just trying to think what else I've got going on. Oh, no, the pressure's on now. I know, because the there's, there's like lots of, gal lots of galleries dotted around London. Edit Gallery over in Greenwich. Um, nice. I think Electric Gallery still has some work. Um, I mean, they're mainly kind of L London focused. There's mm -hmm. also in Brighton, my hometown, um, Enter Gallery. Yes, of have course. have a lot of yeah. my work in there. So that's, yeah. Wow. How do you keep on top of that? Like, this, this is where the maths comes in, right? <laughs> it's like, how do you keep on top of everything? It's, this must be like a, a whole day's, you know, work in just trying to there, keep up with it. It's funny because, like, I guess people don't realise that there is kind of a bit of admin logistics and, and da, da 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 involved in being an artist, not just being in a studio painting. Um, but at the same time, like, you develop relationships over time. Mm. So it's not like every day I need to be in touch with this gallery. It's kind of like you have this, these evolved relationships with galleries yeah. and you know um they might need something from you at one point but then you know then they do their thing mm. um yeah so it's okay it all works out it, it's a balance like you have to kind of balance time in the studio with time kind of just yeah. sorting out all this all the stuff yeah and going back to the too much aspect of of the day in day out of, a, of an artist yeah. like, is there ever a point where you think to yourself wow because your commerciality will only ever rise because you're you're putting yourself out there and doing so much. Mm. Like, at what point do you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to need, you know, the, a next level again? At what point do you, do you ever see that and feel like you're, it's overwhelming or a lot going on? Um, yeah, it can, it can, it can be. Um, and, you know, I get... That, I think that's kind of... You know, working with galleries is great because that takes a whole load of, like, the selling aspect and, mm -hmm. the, you know... Um, and I was, I've was i been working with a PA just to do sort of some admin -y things. So I think it's a question of just kind of building up the, the little bits of help that you need. Yeah. And then you have this sort of support yeah. kind of structure around you. And then there's the social media side of things as well. Which yeah. 
does that play a big part in um, income and revenue? Um, it's hard to like quantify, um, but I do think it's really important to have like a visible presence and, mm. uh, you know, just so that people can see what you're up to. You know, if you've got an exhibition, can't, you know, people will, can know about it. Yeah. So it's just a really important, like it's a really good tool yeah. for like stuff like that. It can be, I don't know, I think probably lots of artists have this love-hate relationship yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. it. Like, Got to so, do that again. Oh. Uh, yeah. Or you can just be like, oh, I, can't, I, I don't want to like do this kind of... Pre- uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Presenting me. Yeah. And then Sometimes your... you just want to like introvert, hide away. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, it's, it's like everything. It's a balance and you just have to get the right balance for you. Like... I don't feel the need to post every day no. or even every week. Sometimes I don't post for a month. Really? And I, you know, I'm okay with that. If, if I've got an intensive period in the studio where I'm really just painting, I, yeah, I, I feel like it's okay to leave it and pick it up. It's, I, I don't feel that kind of, you know, chained to it. You're a rare and bird I, where that's concerned because as yeah. soon as you've got peers and people that are present that are yeah. watching you on your feed, yeah. that, that pressure is real, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. But, um... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's like a sort of ongoing trying to sort of manage that yeah. so that it doesn't make you, like, super anxious. Yeah, I think the majority of artists would much prefer to be introvert and just do what they yeah. do. And It's funny, though, because I... I'm definitely like an introvert. Like I spend so much time alone in my studio, and I, like I sort of feel like I I need it. But I'm I think I'm an in- introvert extrovert. Like I do also need sort of contact and you know bits of periods of time where I'm I'm in connection with people. Mm. So I I think I'm like both of those things at the same time. Wow. Wow, the, the dual personality. Yeah, thing. split personality. That's what makes the best artists <clears throat> though. You can never quite figure them out. They can't quite figure themselves out. Mm. Yeah, we like that. That's, that's what that's what makes the world go around in art. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. People are complicated. They're yeah. not black and white. They're <laughs> like they're very nuanced. Yeah. yeah. Which is yeah, which is I guess like why you know one of the detrimental things about social media is that it tries to be it, it's sort of quite quite black and white and forgets about nuance. Yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And people picking up on things that may have been like six months ago, that they clock and they just oh yeah I well, love that. Does that yeah. play when you know when you get the feedback from the audience and the crowd? Does mm-hmm. that does that help steer certain concepts and ideas or or reformat them again? You know, bring them back to the forefront? Mm, um, I don't know if. I... I don't know. It's kind of a weird one, isn't it? Like how much you're influenced by the feedback that you get on, you know, social media or whatever. Um, I I wouldn't say that like it steers my direction or anything, but, you know, like when I had the first exhibition with my lip paintings, it was interesting to me what connects with people. Mm. So if something really connects with people, I'm kind of interested. Mm. You know, why does that connect? Like what mm. what is it about that thing? I can imagine there's a, there's a, a circle, a group of uh, people that, artists that work within a similar sort of arena, mm. ballpark. Do you do you frequent with other artists? Is it or is it really as isolated as you're suggesting? Like, are there people that you you hit up and you're like, oh, what do you think of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that yeah. There's like. Um a sort of group of, I guess, my sort of contemporaries. Yeah. Who, you know, we exhibit together, we're in the same galleries. So, mm. yeah, there's definitely, like, a sort of support network of um, artists. But I also find I know a lot of, you know, gallery people, people who run galleries, because I guess they're more the people that I'm kind yeah, of... Yeah, you're on, trying to work towards... You with. know, talking with. Yeah. And, so it's both, really. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine so. Because those really are ultimately the people that help sell the, sell the pieces and make them work. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've kind of got like, yeah, like a working relationship with them, I guess, that sometimes turns into friendships and, mm. yeah. But, yeah, no, um, lots of kind of good artists to, uh, if, you know, if you want to run something by someone. The higher or, echelon, the higher <laughs> echelon of such. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been great because, you know, to have the conversation as such, particularly for young and aspiring people mm. that are just getting into the into the game, Yeah, it's super important that that, this kind of conversation comes out. Yeah. The, the you know the the fault lines of how to do certain things and yeah. you know, where the best growth is. 
that's yeah that's it because i think art, art um you know one one of the things about art is that it's like there's no road map like everybody's journey is, in it is kind of slightly different and mm. you just kind of forge your head um but i would say like that you know if somebody was young inspiring uh, aspiring to do it like and you have it in you just go for it like you'll have lots of people tell you this is not a good idea <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. like but you know if you feel it in, within you like just do it like life's short like i can't imagine you get much you know pushback from the ideas that you have i can't imagine it no i, d- I don't but you know like say for example as, as a kid like honestly like i had i had nobody encourage you know who inspired me or encouraged me to even think that i was creative or you know mm. had any sort of uh, aptitude for art mm. Mm. self drive yeah very much like very much sort of in a motor mm. to like just create i yeah. suppose i guess that's the sentiment of the podcast isn't it be proactive have yeah. your own drive. Yeah, because that's, that, that's where it has to... I guess that with anything creative, kind of has to come from some kind of internal thing that you need to get out, like you need to express it. Yeah, it's key. It's key to everything. Get yeah. the best possible outcome of what's coming from your mind. Yeah, because then also you... I think, I think if you sort of listen to that and listen to that intuition, you don't sort of second guess yourself too much and you don't think about what other people are going to think. Mm. You, you kind of, I think that's important to sort of trust in whatever it is that is kind of the thing you want to yeah. express. And not let other people or influence dictate yeah. that. No, definitely. And I mean, I guess, you know, I guess if you do sort of study at art school, you, you do have people critiquing and criticizing and, and mm. maybe that can be helpful yeah. i'm sure sometimes it can but i think sometimes it probably isn't helpful and it's up to you to decide mm. I, I appreciate that but it's not but you're wrong but you're wrong <laughs> you're wrong <laughs> you'll see <laughs> yeah yeah oh the anarchic behavior of artists we love them <laughs> don't we hey? <laughs> i wonder what the teachers think when they're having to pull together these syllabuses and you, and knowing in their heads it's like well yeah i wouldn't do it I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't put myself through this because I'm a f- free thinker of art. What know. the teachers? Yeah, they must yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know? I, I haven't. I it confounds me. I, I don't know what must be going through their mind. Because how could you be? <laughs> how could you be interested in art and be like, draw this? You know, school tie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Draw the, yeah, yeah. Totally. Why would you do that? <laughs> All the boundaries and rules that are set within genres as well. They're baffling. Like, where did those sudden Lord of the Fly behaviour opinions suddenly come from where you have to... You can't do that with oil painting. You can't do mm. that and do... Do you know what I mean? Because there is... A, it, it, it can be institutionalised, can't it, in many respects? Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess <coughs> so, yeah. There can be, um, yeah, things that are seen as the done thing and yeah. things that... But, like, I guess art, art is kind of about breaking those rules. Because, like, things develop, over, things develop over time, don't they? And then they get solidified. Yeah. And then it's up to an artist to break it and, yeah, like, yeah. mash it up again. But that comes in cycles too, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? All of a sudden something becomes really relevant where you probably go, oh, yeah, but I did that. <laughs> you know, I did that, like, eight, eight years ago. Come on. You know, mm. it's funny how the world works, isn't it, art? Yeah. Yeah, but I do. Yeah, I do think that's yeah one of the important important things of artists is to like, yeah, disrupt. To disrupt. That's what we're here to do. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. It was awesome. <laughs> awesome. More intel for this finest kind here in Arts Arcade, Piccadilly. <laughs> thank you so much, my darling. That's it. We get the fist bump going. <laughs> it's a Wall Street Culture podcast on the way. You guys stay lucky. Thank you again. Thank you. Take care now. Easy. <laughs>